But anyway, this is not a laughing matter. No? This is serious. So uh, yesterday, I watched CNN. And according to CDC, parang DOH yan sa kanila, Center for Disease Control. Uh, the Delta variant spreads like chicken pox. So the transibility, how do you say that? No? The way it transmits, so it's just like chicken pox. So we urge you to observe health protocols, even those who are fully vaccinated like me, Mom Susan. So for those who are not yet vaccinated, uh, find a way, you know? Register with your LGU and then <clears throat> uh, with your company. Um, it will be an added protection on our part. So, again, observe health protocols. We are almost halfway of the year 2021. And year end is fast approaching. So, we are now planning for the national AGM and, of course, the local annual general membership meeting. And as early as now, we urge those who are interested to serve ISEP and to serve our members, feel free to contact Mel if you want to be nominated as officer, as a candidate for our 2021 BOD election this coming December. Okay? So, since I am your governor, and something happened along the way. There were some mixed up with the uh, arrangement. And even the one who is supposed to introduce the speaker, uh, something happened also. So I have to do it. So let me introduce our speakers this morning. Our first speaker is a, an ECE graduate from Papua <laughs> University. And okay. then he started working as a product development quality assurance tester no, at PLDT. And he transferred to SMC as account sales executive. And presently, he is the outdoor sales engineer of um, JJ Lab Philippines. So our first speaker is Kyle Rugacion. Kyle, good morning. Good morning, Sir Julius. Uh, thank so you for I'll, that. I'll go on, or are you going to introduce your next speaker, or I'll, I will continue? Um, we plan, sir, that I will be the one to introduce uh, the next speaker. Okay, good. good. So because be... I was, I was ask, I, I was looking at his resume, and he finished BSICE, so ICE. So I, I, I googled it. ICE is instrumentation and control engineering, right? Okay. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to turn you over to our resource speaker this morning on the topic industrial automation. Please help me welcome Engineer Kyle Rogacion of JJ Lab Philippines. Kyle, take it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning, ICEP Cebu. Uh, Sir Julius, thank you for that uh, very warm uh, introduction. So uh, I know this is a Saturday morning today. Uh, thank you for taking time to listen to our webinar. So the title of our webinar for today is uh, about automation in an industrial setting. So uh, this is part of our portfolio from the previous webinars. If you have, uh, we were able to attend, we were able to discuss about uh, more on building automation. So. Uh, we also have other solutions uh, with automation, and maybe later on we can also discuss to you about our renewables or solar applications. So what are the objectives of this uh, webinar? So to be able to grasp the importance of automation in an industrial setting, number one. So to introduce the components of automation system, including its structures, so also to introduce the attendees to input and output model, analog and digital. Uh, for sure, very familiar po tayo dito dahil uh, we are ECEs. So this is part of our curriculum during our college or maybe uh, right now sa work po natin ngayon. So types of automation systems, uh, production and process, uh, introduction, 
uh, with the concepts of controllers, regulators, uh, sensors, actuators, and IP protections. And uh, as a solutions provider, uh, our objective also is to, how to, to help you uh, to design or to be able to build your connectivity uh, solutions for these uh, systems. So later on, we will you will know more about JJ Lab if this is the first time uh, you have uh, listened to us. So, so there. Um, I think uh, Michael or Darwin, we can start with the slides of our uh, presentation proper. The slides are coming up. Uh, okay. right? The slides are coming up. Parang na traffic sa EDSA. So basically, the course outline po today po I just give you some highlights of uh, today's presentation. So we will know more about uh, the definition of automation. So the history of automation, uh, factory and process versus process automation. Um, the key components uh, inside an automation system. And uh, we'll talk more, talk about uh, some things about Internet of Things and automation in every step. So yeah, these are some of the highlights for today. So normally, you can see automation in different applications like uh, food processing, uh, chemicals, even in building automation, so I think uh, it's everywhere. You can see it everywhere. So this is very uh, important to know, most especially uh, we are ECEs. Yeah, basically industry 4.0. Yes, sir. Basically, it's more on uh, industrial uh, applications. Well, excuse me, who's going to, whose uh, laptop is going to present? So that I can make him. Ah, si Sir Michael Singh, Sir Julius. Well, let me check. Ah, uh, bakak hindi siya nahirapan siya, hindi lang siya. Okay na. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Sige. Go ahead. Okay. So the title is uh, Automation in an Industrial Setting. This is our uh, webinar series for this morning. So, sige, uh, next slide, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michael, next slide, please. Okay na siya, di ba, Coos? Nakapag-present. Uh -oh. uh, wala pa kasi sa Zoom eh, na you have request control for the other. Uh -oh. Sa Teams, you can request control for to another desktop. Yeah, to another desktop, sir. Yeah. So, some applications, they have adv advantages and disadvantages. Yes. Nag ano, ano yan? Nag-hang yan? Uh -oh. Kulang yan ng memory. Ilang, <laughs> ano ba? 8 gig? DDR4, DDR3, DDR2. Wala na DDR2. DDR4 na ngayon. <laughs> yeah. Usually, um, like uh, what we do, if you do some presentations, you you close some applications um, to save on memory. Paki ano na lang dyan, um, please restart again the presentation. Ano kasi yan? I think yung background nyo, parang nahihirapan siyang maglakad. Tingnan mo, puyat na siya. Oh. Yung, nag, ano, yung sa picture, nakita mo? 
Sige sir, uh, let yeah, me yeah, help. Okay. Let me let it's me okay. help muna sir uh, with ano uh, with the presentation for the company profile. Yeah, so, okay. um uh, JJ Lap. So, JJ Lap is a joint venture of Jebsen and Jessen Southeast Asia and uh, Lap Holding Asia. So, this is part of the Lap Group in Germany. So, um, JJ Lap Philippines. So, this is part of the JJ Southeast Asia. So, J Jebsen and Jessen is the sole distributor and si Lap is the uh, manufacturer or the principal. Pero, excuse me, Kyle. Iba yung Johnson and Johnson na bakuna, no? Iba, iba po yun, sir. Iba yun? Okay. <laughs> uh, Jebsen and Jessen. Sige, thank you. Go ahead. So, yeah. So, our office is located here in BGC. Uh, we're near Uptown Mall uh, and Alayaan Avenue. So, we also have offices in Davao City and Cebu City. So, in Cebu, sir, uh, right now, si, si Rog is, uh, that, that's where she is assigned right now in Mandawe, Mandawe City. So, but I think Rog is in Davao right now. So, our office in Davao is in uh, E. Asinto Street, Davao City. So our factory, so we also have our factory here in Southeast Asia. We call this as our JJ Lab Cable SMI. So we do the inventory and logistics of our cables. And uh, 4,000 4, out of the 44,000 SKU worldwide are stored here in Indonesia. So more or less 10% of the lab products are being stored here in Southeast Asia or in Indonesia. So we also do uh, logistics of uh, weekly and uh, sea shipment. So at least we deliver uh, 10 to 20 containers, 300 deliveries per week. So that's the capability of our inventory, our, our, our uh, SMI, JJ Lab SMI Indonesia. So this is these are our main brands in JJ Lab. So um, we have power and control cables. So all flex. So this is the first branded cable match almost any environmental condition. So later on, uh, marami po tayong makikita mga examples na all flex since uh, this is for automation application. So you will see uh, different uh, variety of all flex cables. So for power and control cables. Then we also have Unitronic. This is our data transmission systems. So normally mga data cables, yung mga Profibus, if you're familiar, mga bus cables. Nag-fall siya dito under sa Unitronic. Yung mga shielded type cables as well. So we also have data communication systems for Ethernet technology, yung mga CAT 5E, CAT 6 for internet applications for industrial networking. So yan po yung isa naming uh, top um, brand, so si Etherline. Then Hytronic, we also have uh, fiber optic solutions or cables, the single mode, the multi-mode, so yung mga different number of cores. So we also have our Hytronic or fiber optic brand. So industrial connectors, EPIC. So EPIC is a, it's an acronym of, uh, stands for Environmentally Protected Industrial Connectors. So these are um, basically accessories for our cables as well. So skin top, cable glands. So what's the purpose of this? Uh, this is to quickly fasten or seal the cable entries. So that's the purpose of cable glands. Later on, maybe uh, Michael will also share about this one. So Sylvin. Uh, Sylvin is a cable conduit. Uh, as you can see in the picture, this is uh, an example of a drag chain. So Sylvin chain, tawag namin dyan. So basically, uh, this is a container of cables that is normally seen in mga FNB. Uh, settings, yung mga food and beverage settings. Because uh, if you want to uh, displace your cable from one place to another, you need a container uh, or a cable cable gland, a cable conduit uh, to to use para mas protected yung mga cables natin. Then last but not the least, we also have marking systems, FlexiMark. 
So normally, uh, these are cable cabinet markings and cable markings. Basically, label. Label siya ng mga cables. So we also do customization of cables depending on the application. Sometimes, uh, yung mga medium voltage applications. Um, XLPE, if you are familiar. Crosslink polyethylene uh, type of cables. Fire rated cables is also categorized in uh, customized cables. Fire rated cables uh, for FDAS, for fire pumps, for background music, for PA systems. So these are some of the customized cables that we have. On top of that, we also have uh, partnerships with different companies. So uh, be, for, you might be familiar with this company. So si Legrand. So Legrand, um, we have we we sell their uh, industrial plugs and sockets. So yun yung mga flagship products nila, yung mga plugs at mga sockets na ginagamit for industrial application. So yung mga if you want to to use it sa mga remote areas, so yun yung mga mga products nila. Then si Wago, um, yung mga terminal blocks. So uh, power distribution system, so part siya ng Wago. Yun yung mga products ni Wago that we sell. Then Tossy Box, uh, this provides yung mga solutions for uh, remote VPN, yung mga virtual private network tunnels, and uh, Internet of Things. So usually po, uh, if you want to monitor your system remotely, if you are away, uh, for example, if the plant uh, supervisor is away from their plant, so he can see it uh, privately using the Tossy box. So in monitor it. So Huawei. So we also have ito bago lang to. Uh, late last year, Huawei. We also have partnership with Huawei. Uh, string inverters for these are up for residential and commercial applications. So uh, Cablofil. Cablofil is part of Legrand. So we also have our cable tray systems. Yung mga usually mga mesh type na cable tray that are used uh, to uh, parang container siya ng mga cables that are, that are installed sa, sa mga ceiling, sa mga, sa mga walls. So, to protect yung mga cables natin. Yung mga mesh type, normally, uh, mga hot, deep, galvanized, and stainless steel po yung uh, material nito. And also, last but not the least, we also have our uh, partner for FDAS, or Fire Detection and Alarm System. So, Unipos. So this is a German company. So we have uh, we have different systems, addressable, conventional, and wireless system. So these are just some of the portfolio of JJ Lab for automation. So uh, I think uh, so much for this one. Uh, we would like to I would like to turn over to Michael. Uh, he will be the one to elaborate. Uh, what what are the applications used for industrial automation setting? So let me unshare my screen. I uh, would like to call on uh, Mr. Michael Singh. He's our uh, technical solution specialist for JJ Lab. So he's a graduate of uh, industrial, uh, I think, instrumentation and control engineering in RTU. So Michael, uh, you may take the floor. And so thank you, Kyle. So good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Michael. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sir Jules. Uh, thank you, ISEP Cebu, for inviting JJ Lap uh, to be your partner speaker for this morning. No? So we apologize na for uh, I think the delay to, no, Sir Jules, Kyle. Uh, but uh, we're still fortunate enough na Kyle. And we're here right now to really yeah. Okay. So, uh, so let me share my screen. So again, so thank... Olympic at yung background mo. Ah. Nasa Tokyo ka ba? Uh, di... Nakiki, nakiki Olympics lang, sir. <laughs> okay, good. Yes, sir. So there uh, goes the PowerPoint slide. Yes, sir. Actually, kasi yung slide ko is... Uh, direct 
connected na mainly sa topic natin. Correct. Yeah, yeah so uh, kaya hindi ko na ituloy kanina. Okay? Uh, but uh, so to start, no? So this topic is very close to me because I I graduated as an instrumentation and control engineer. No, so yeah, so I I I am Michael Singh, no? So I am Cebu and all of the ICEP members here, no. So thank you for uh, joining us this mor this morning, no. So uh, quick background with me why I told you that this uh, topic is close to me is because I am an instrumentation and control engineer. No, I started practicing it after I graduated uh, last 2017. Although no, uh, we we are not uh, doing it the same way that I was doing it uh, last 2017 to 2018, no. But uh, we are. Uh, Ano pa rin, our goal no, as a company is to still partner with uh, with organizations like ISEP to really educate you, not just with our products, with what Kyle mentioned earlier, but also with topics that is very relevant no, sa industry, especially for the engineering industry. And one of which mainly is uh, the automation. No? So yun yung part na control dun sa, sa course na meron ako, yung control engineering part in the automation. So for this morning, how how are we going to approach this session no? Uh, industrial automation. I no automation in an industrial setting, sorry. So we're going to learn it through progression. Basically, let's just quickly define what automation is, just one slide definition. But we'll see you no know, na lahat ng ide, the way we will define automation, we will see it through the examples from history from what's happening uh, right now in the industry, I'll show some examples. Then, where are we headed? No, ano ba yung future ng automation? So, lahat yan, dadaanan natin very quickly. No, So, uh, I think you've seen some. Some of you may have seen some, but... Uh, you have seen some uh, of the examples. Actually, I will cite examples even at home. So, basically, automation is everywhere. Okay, but uh, for the purpose of uh, of uh, businesses, like iba yung de ma ma mababago yung definition of automation or mas may nag-improve siya over the years. Okay, so to start, the main question is what is automation? So basically, you can Google this up, look this up in a dictionary or Wikipedia. So according to a dictionary definition, the automation is the technique of making an apparatus or a process or a system operate automatically. Okay, so a straightforward definition. But uh, let's look at uh, the definition as stated or provided by Wikipedia. Naman. So this this is ano naman, uh, somehow mas relevant dun sa anong ina-expect natin pag may automation. No? So this is the technology by which a process or a procedure is performed with minimum human assistance. No? So uh, during my college days, part to ng isang ano namin, isang talk namin, no? na ang automation ba nakakatulong ba talaga sa tao yan? Or is it uh, baga uh, removing jobs. No? So, kasi pag sabi mong, uh, before kasi, uh, our professors told us, yung mga planta noon, like yung Reynolds na ball pen, before they were operating pa. Before they were operating, uh, one machine is equal to one person. No? So, eh, maraming machines yun nagpaproduce ng pens. No? But, after na nag-start mag implement yung planta ng upgrades dun sa system. Uh, Nag-install na ng mga controllers, mga PLCs, programmable logic controllers. One person is now managing 10 machines. So, kung may 10 machine, natanggal yung sham. So, so, we asked our questions, parang tayo ba nakakatulong ba tayo in, in totality? So, that was the talk of the topic. So, yes. Minimum uh, with minimum human assistance actually nowadays totally without human assistance. Uh, but there are still companies, uh, but uh, some companies, tech companies, are still believing that the play between machines, human machines, AI, big data, and human is still the best way, the best and most efficient way of doing things you know, in a technology-driven world. 
Okay? And lastly, no, ito yung pinaka-definition na we are following no, as practitioners of this uh, particular industry. According to the Industrial Society of Automation or ISA, no, in the, in automation is the creation and application of technology to monitor and control the production and delivery of products and services. No? So, production and delivery of products and services. So, later we will see why it's not just about the products. No, before automation mainly is about products. So, so uh, the production of food, oil and gas, cement, pulp and paper, no, logs, wood, etc. So, mga may product agad. Ang automation, ang thinking, nasa manufacturing plants lang. No, but actually, there's what we call building automation. I think we have already uh, done some webinars with ICFC, with Sir Julius as well. Uh, doing uh, dealing with building automation. No? So we also defined automation there. And uh, I think to some of you who have uh, attended the webinar, I think you have you are already familiar with what automation is. Okay? So this way we will look at automation. Uh, basically, kung ano, paano ba talaga siya nag-start. No? So before the industrial revolution, where we really see no, yung talagang development ng automation. Now, there are still historical records or citations where automatic control machines are being used. Now, even uh, as early as 300 BC up to 70 AD, parang mga uh, oh. Sorry, sir. Oh, wait, let me. May inadjust lang yung speaker natin yeah. konti yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you, okay. Sir Julius. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, uh, session na po for that. So, uh, going back, no. So, even before the creation of uh, machines, no, or uh, transistors, IC or integrated circuits, no, yung ko ano yung nakikita natin today, no, relays, mga contactors, so before all of those things, no. Uh, people are have already discovered ways no to use or to use the tech the everything around them to create machines that will really serve them purpose no so for example no water clock or the clepsydra this is uh, a very ingenious way of measuring time no so what how they did it was uh, if we look at the example here na play pasko so, ganito nag si Clepsydra. So, they have a cons uh, water supply. No? So, supply silang water dito and they have an overflow tube. No? So, meron din silang stopper which controls the flow rate. So, they measure time by, uh, kumbaga, by the flow, by a constant flow rate. No? So, we can see it here na yung constant flow rate ng water will increase the volume of the water here which corresponds to specific uh, position dito sa kanilang time dial. So that's how they measure time. So an example of that is yung uh, what you call this? Yung sand glass. Yung hourglass. No, yung minabalikad mo yung sand. Yeah, that's one example of measuring time uh, through a constant flow rate. No? So that's one good example. Next, uh, I think this was ano, during the Roman era time. No? Here on spending machine. So this is a very ingenious way also of of getting holy water. So this is basically a the one of the first very first vending machines ever created. So they were able to get uh, holy water. I think during this was during the Roman era, no, yung after uh, the era of Christ, where uh, religion is starting to really flourish. No, the Roman Catholics. No, so uh, for you to get holy water, 
No? So, you'll drop a coin at the top or somewhere here. No? And once na mag-drop yung coin, the, the weight of the coin hitting this uh, particular, what you call this, platform here, na no? nakakonect sa isang hinge, yung force niya, it will, it will uh, push down no? itong lever na to a bit which opens up a valve here which will release water. So, so very ingenious way of creating a vending machine. No? So, so even before na wala pa yung mga uh, electronic components na yan, they, they were able to create vending machines for themselves. Then after that, pag nawala na yung pag ano, nasumara na siya, the coin will just drop here then they can collect their earnings. So that's how uh, they did this one, no? the Heron's vending machine. That's how it works. No? But moving on with the Industrial Revolution, so we have four, no? the first, second, third, and we are what we're in, on where we are right now, Industry 4.0, correct, Sir Ganina, nag-chat sa, no? So we will later see, no, paano ba nag-progress tong Industrial Revolution na to. Okay? But basically, we as humans, no, in general, we progress when we need something. No? So uh, for, I, I'm going to be quoting this line from a movie na, uh, I think this movie is from the onion, yung Keanu Reeves, no? Uh, the, the professor in... Ah, hindi, sir. Uh, ano nga ba yun? Yung may alien, si Klatu. Siya si Klatu yung alien na, no? Pero there, I, I thought that you were going to say a uh, popular phrase, eh, that necessity uh, the mother of all invention. Ah, hindi, sir. Uh, meron pa doon yung, sir, sir, yung... Uh, meron, ano naman to? Uh, at the precipice, we change, no? So, so that change drives innovation. No? Okay. So, doon kasi sa part na yun. So, although uh, parang yung setting is a bit different, but yung industrial revolution kasi, uh, isa sa mga uh, driving factors nito is war. No? So, talagang nag-think nag, nag of many ways sila paano improve yung technology because of war. No? Later, we will see an example of that. No? But basically, correct din yung sir, necessity is a... Uh, kumbaga, mother of change. Yun. So it's also what uh, what uh, drove industrial revolution to really uh, develop the world. No? So necessity and efficient production. No? So aside to that, uh, transportation for agriculture, textile manufacturing, we will see examples of this one. No, Siyempre, andyan na din yung uh, human side talaga. No? That's just the human side, politics and capitalism. Okay? So here are the four industrial revolutions. No? So first, basically, we will be dealing with uh, the steam engine. Siyan yung pinakauna, no? the development of the what or steam engine. No? Next is uh, we learned to use uh, electricity. And from there, we, a lot of things have changed. Then the third is yung, ito na yung, from the transition period to the digital era, we started learning and creating ways of doing things more efficiently by creating computers no but we will look at your first computer no will a we will look at a video later then lastly where we are and where are we headed now the fourth industrial revolution or it's called right now industry 4.0 no so we will see no na paano nag progress ng industry 4.0 no so to start for us to really understand automation so we look at the elements of automation first. No, kasi yung mga examples sa pag-uusapan natin, even what you are doing at home, no, relates itong major components na to. No, so basically, automation has major uh, three major components. So these are the input uh, components, the processing components, and the output components. <clears throat> no? So in our course, in instrumentation control engineering, we call it as the measuring element, control element, and final control element, okay? So, one good example of this one is tayo. Pag iinom tayo ng tubig, no? Pag bulalagay tayo ng, ng tubig sa baso. Na ngayon, uh, nasa yung process doon? So, yung pag-fill nung baso on a certain level, okay? So, on our minds, we have a certain level to which we will stop or we will stop pouring the bottle. No? 
stop pouring water on the uh, on the glass. No? So yun yung set point natin. So tayo yung controller. No, tayo yung controller ng process na yun. No? So how do we do measurement? No, so since we are humans, hindi naman tayo yung uh, kailangan level sensor or anything, we look at the level. No, we look at the level, no, then nakikita siya slowly tumataas. Then once na nakikita na natin na, na palapit na siya dun sa, sa set point or sa level na gusto natin, no, you try observing it. Unti-unti natin binababa, ini-slow down natin yung flow ng water. So same goes with uh, industrial processes, no, but with automation components in that, or with electronics and computers no but the way we pour water is basically simple automation no so yun yung measurement natin then any final control element natin or any output yung output is once na tumataas na yung level nakikita na natin na papalapit na siya dun sa point na gusto nating or ma-achieve na level ng water dun sa baso unti-unti din tayo nag-move no but unconsciously na yun kasi Ah, uh, kubaga ano muscle memory na siya. So, but alam na ng katawan natin yung gagawin. But the the way we are slowly or kubaga ina-adjust natin yung yung flow ng water by tipping over our hands. That's how we control the output. <clears throat> Sorry. Joining in this morning is the team leader of our technical team, my supervisor na si Sir Angelo too. So, just to mention, in-approve ko kasi yung ano niya, yung pag-join niya. Okay, so that's basically what's happening. No, so that's a good example of uh, automation. No, so another example is yung uh, mga aircon natin. No, although aircon wala siyang, I, that's ito pala, I forgot to mention yung feedback. No, so uh, feedback on mare, uh, hindi natin na ano, parang na late yung reaction natin, nag ano, nag overflow yung tubig. So dun na talaga yung bigla exaggerated na pag stop natin nung no uh, pag fill up ng water so although iba yung ano iba na yung ano because we're not entirely machines but i hope you get the point of what automation is no, and how it works no with this three with this basically uh, process diagram here but later we will see also uh, the purpose of storage but uh, we as humans no we are the one good examples of automation So we have our brains not to store memory, to store information. So from the things that we do, you no, know, once we get to learn new things, the main the minor details, we store it. You no, know, so that when we encounter the same things, you know, alam na natin yung gagawin natin. So we're basically uh, machines in a sense. Okay. So moving forward, let's discuss the three components. You no, know. first the measuring elements. No, so ano ba yan? So napakaraming klase na measurement elements no sa sa electronics engineering or sa electrical engineering and then yung mga uh, voltage meters, um, uh, uh, current meters, no milliameters, mga flow sensors. No, so if nakapunta na kay sa planta yung old plants na napakaraming dial na ganito, napakaraming uh what you call yung mga uh, uh, indicators na ganito. So those are from linked to a measuring device. Then nakikita mo ano yung measure no sensors na yon. So basically, these are the sensors, no, uh, data gathering devices, no. So pag sa in old plants, so I visited one at the NC Northern Cement. So nakatuwa kasi sa gilid and dun yung lumang automatic yung control component nila. Then and dun na yung bago. So may kita mo yung difference ng dalawa, no. But basically Ito yung mga measuring tools na ginagamit. So, some examples na ginagamit sa industry. So, for temperature, temperature measurement. So, andyan yung mga RTDs na tinatawag. No? Resistance, temperature detectors. No? For suitable for, ano to, for high temperature measurement. No? Andyan din yung mga thermocouples. So, if you have been into processing facilities, no? makakita kayo ng mga ganitong uh, devices. No? Typically, ter uh, temperature uh, or mga thermometers, no? temperature measuring devices yung nakakabit dyan sa loob. No? So, ito, um, hindi lang ano yung figure niya, but ano to, metallic, uh, IP protected metallic ano to, device. No? To protect the sensor and the transmitter inside, no? 
uh, against the environment. So very important yan sa, sa automation. So may mga ginagamit din tayo like thermistors, mga semiconductors na capable of measuring temperature, na meron din tayo mga bimetallic components. No? So yung pag, simpleng pagpaplansya natin, there's automation in there. And ang measuring device niya is yung bimetallic component. No? And yung kanyang uh, controller is yung yung ano mo yung distance ng circuit mo so if uh, yung mga flat irons na ginagamit natin if you'll notice no bakit may iniikot tayo doon no yung iniikot natin na knob that's adjusting the distance of the sir of the kubaga yung uh, yung switch ng circuit so if you can see it here so it's adjusting the distance no so mas mainit mas malayo yung distance bakit so once na Uh, kung waga, once na bumitaw sila yung distance na yun, once na open yung circuit, it will power up the uh, the heater ng flat iron. And once na uminit na yun, yung sinasabi kong bimetallic uh, material na yun, it's, it's measuring temperature. No? So it, it's a uh, combination of two dissimilar metals na magkaiba yung kanilang uh, temperature coefficient. No? Yung expansion nila. Uh, when subjected to temperatures no so basically pag uminit yung isa nag-expand since yung isa mas matagal siyang mag-expand the tendency is for the metal to bend no kaya siya by metallic uh, measuring element dalawang metal siya no yung isa mabil pag uminit nag-expand agad nagkakaroon agad ng motion yung isa hindi so that's why kapag nag-expand to ang tendency is nagbe-bend siya okay now that bending <coughs> will Uh, kung malayo siya, sobrang init, mataas na bend yung mangyayari. Then, pag tumama siya dun sa circuit, dun namamatay yung ilaw. Meaning, uh, maximum temperature na yung meron yung uh, flat iron natin. So, that's basic automation. No? So, one good, uh, one good example of the use of measuring element and uh, final control elements and controllers as well. No? So, that's for the temperatures. For level naman, no? napakaraming sensors for level. Depende yan kung anong fluid yung minimeasure mo. No? So napakarami yan. If you're familiar with Anderson Hauser, no? uh, they have quite a lot of sensors. Iba-ibang application, iba-iba ng um, maraming factors that they are considering. Like yung foaming sa tank, yung moisture sa tank. No? Kasi in each sensor na meron, meron siya mga... Uh, capabilities ko baga may pros for this kind of application may cons din siya no but basic example of a level measurement is a flow switch no parang ano to eh, parang tayo to no once na na float switch pala no once na ma-reach yung certain level it triggers a circuit which sends a signal na stop na yung flow ng water no so yung mga si kung meron kayo yung mga traditional yung water tank tas may pump no biglang bubukas yung pump tapos after period bila siyang titigil so yung sensor na nakakabit dun si flow switch no or if it's not flow switch a pressure switch but most often they're not than not it is a flow switch no nag na nagse-sense ng signal to stop for the pump to stop pumping water dun sa water tank dahil puno na siya or it reached a certain level for it to stop okay so another good example of this flow switch is yung mga ano natin yung mga toilets no so it's just a uh, kubaga it's using buoyancy as a sensor no but it's basically the a good example of a flow switch na kapag yung tubig sa loob nung uh, reservoir is mataas na that reservoir that uh, buoyant uh, device will move up no it's it's acting like a lever na pag tumaas na siya it close na yung cap nung kung saan yung source ng water kasi automatically nag stop That's a good example also of a flow switch. Okay? So, more relevant to our to our industry, to the uh, electronics industry. So, fire that fire alarm systems, no? yung mga smoke detectors, heat detectors, no? yung mga combined detectors natin, mga beam detectors, aspirating detectors. So, basically, all of the, the input devices of a fire alarm system are also measuring or uh, measuring devices or measuring elements 
na yung buong automation component mo is yung fire alarm system. That's why it's a very important or it's a part of the building automation system. No? It's automating fire protection. Okay? Next, we move on to the controllers. So sila yung brain ng processes. No? So if you are practicing or if you are in the industry where you are dealing with controllers, programmable logic controllers, yan. So sila yung uh, sila yung mga maliliit na piece ng device na kasing mahal ng cellphone or uh, ng isang motor. No? Mga, more, mga 10,000 to 100,000 plus ang isa. And may sometimes half a million pa siya. Ganun siya kamahal. So, nagiging mahal siya because of the complexity, the brand, and yung capability niya to uh, solve problems. No? So, these controllers are the product of semiconductors, electronics. No? No, unlike what we have ex what we have seen before. No, so for example, what we are seeing here, this is a Wago controller, no, one of our product lines. No, so this controller is like a PLC or this is a PLC, no, a programmable logic controller where uh, you can uh, add input and output devices. So nang kung makikita niya lahat ng part na to, meron siyang mga butas. So yan natin kaya nawa connect yung mga circuits natin for input and output controls. No? But basically, all of the logic, the set point, no? the baga yung logic formation, yung, uh, yung process flow natin, pinoprogram natin dito through several pro programming languages. No? Same goes with this microcontroller here, if you're familiar with Arduino. No? So if gusto mo gumawa ng building automation at home pero wala kang budget or uh, gusto mo din matuto ng programming at the same time, you can use Arduino. No, yo. So you move from electronics to uh to 220 circuits. No, so gagamit ka lang ng relays to do interfacing. But basically, Arduino, this controller itself can be used to for you to create a building automation system of yours. No, yung kung gusto mo yung magpawi ka palang, magtext ka, buboksa na nung kung system mo yung aircon, yung TV, yung mga ilaw. No, pwede yan. You link everything here and you do programming in here. No, it's same with uh, the Wago controller here. Ito ang microcontroller lang to. Uh, maraming very wide din ang application. No? So this one is for industrial setting. This one can be used for industrial or commercial or personal. No? Especially for hobbyists. No? So ito rin yung mga controllers na ginagamit for robotics. No? Na... Nakikita nyo yung mga robotics competition, mga microcontrollers din yung ginagamit. Okay? And here on the right, here's an example of our fire alarm panel. So as I have mentioned earlier, fire alarm systems are also automation components or automation systems. Okay? And lastly, final control elements. No? So in an industrial setting, yung mga final control elements na typical na meron is uh, ito, mga control valves. No, actually, ito sila yung control valves. Then, ito, ay ito pala yung valves mismo. Ito yung control unit on the left, the green here and the gray part here. So, this is a pneumatic control valve. No? So, it, uh, from electrical signal, it will, this, con this will convert it into a pneumatic signal. No? Tapos, itong pneumatic signal, ito yung nagko-control ng movement ng valve natin. So, this can be a butterfly valve or a ball valve. No? But basically, uh, industrial valves contr for control of flow. No? So, same goes here. Pag nag-ipong ka ng tubig sa, sa ating uh, comfort rooms, no? you control the flow with a valve. So, same goes with the industrial setting. Okay? So aside to that, ang common din na ginagamit is motors. No? So, andyan na yung application niya is yung mga dampeners, no? mga uh, variable frequency drives. Yan. So, we also control flow rate by adjusting the speed of the pump or the motor that's driving the flow. So that's one way, you know, industrially of how we control flow rates. Okay? Then lastly, mga pumps itself. Okay, like yung example ng water tank. So pump is the final control element where if ma reach a certain level, it will turn it off or if, uh, if mababa sa level, it will turn it on. Or sometimes the combination of both uh, the variable frequency drive and the pumps. No, may mga ganun tayong uh, cases or scenarios. But basically, these are the typical no, 
control elements that are being used in the industry. But in what in uh, industrial setting, the building setting, so almost sila din yung ginagamit. No fire pumps, no for the uh, fire alarm system or the fire suppression system, no. Uh, but other things also motors pa rin naman no kahit yung mga robotics na yan they are they are basically final control elements but ang kinokontrol mo pa rin doon is yung motor no but it's already uh, optimized in a way na may kita mo na parang hand movement or optimized na yung movement niya but basically you're just controlling the uh, the, the movement of the motor no so <clears throat> there are many companies out there often in Change at this station for the circle line. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yung mga robotic arms, yung mga robots na nagwalk. You're just basically controlling the movement of the motors, no? And uh, ang visual output naman natin, if it's really working, is if yung movement na gusto natin is nagagawa niya. So, so that's, that works with uh, robotic applications. Okay? So you're programming, actually mga for robotic applications, yung motor na ginagamit doon is uh, servo motors. No? Because servo motors are motors suitable for accurate positioning and control. No? So para sa mga CNC machines, na mga 3D printers, mga accurate servo motors yung ginagamit yan. Na para exact movement. Na kung gusto mo buo yung drawing ng kamay mo or ng family mo using a 3D printer, no, uh, the movement of the machine doing the printing is done with a servo motor. Same goes with our printers at home. Okay? So those are the examples of the three major elements of automation. No? So, paano ba siya ginamit sa industrial revolution? No? So, let's start with the first industrial revolution. No? Main highlight nito is yung paggamit ng watt steam engine. No? The use of steam power. No? So, they realized during this period na yung rotating uh, devices, napakarami mong pwedeng gawin doon. No? So, with that, they have transitioned from the manual method of manufacturing. No? with the use of machines no and ang pinaka ginamit nila dito is yung steam power or steam engine so from this period of uh, industrial history dito na form yung factory system or yung factory automation no so if you're familiar with henry ford no the dito rin nag sa kanila din nag originate yung yung production line no yung cars nakasabit nagmo-move siya sa factory floor very slow rate then iba't ibang uh, portion ng planta, iba't ibang tao may specialty, ina-assemble yung kung ano yung part na gagawin nila. No? So doon nag-start lahat yun. No? So necessity uh, drove innovation. No? So ano ba example ito? So doon na nag-start yung, yung steam locomotive transportation no? for territorial expansion, no? basically in the United States and in Europe. No? So that's how they were able to expand, to move, uh, supplies from one location to another, so which really drove growth and expansion. No, so sa atin then, no, that's why uh, uh, there's a sense to the build, build, build program. No, that's why very important yung mga bridges, no, interconnection. No, so uh, once we realize na mas mapabibilis natin ma transport yung humans, goods, mas bumibilis din yung pag ano yung uh, flow ng economy natin, yung pag. Uh, recover natin during the pandemic. Okay, so that's one application. That's why they have utilized best the use of steam engines during this period. But ito yung application niya, but yung controller niya or yung automation system niya, ito talaga yung itsura. Ito, this is a large-scale version, but the main controller here is ito, itong napakaliit na ito, the, fly, the fly ball governor. <clears throat> okay, so how does it work? So, steam, they will create steam, magkaano sila ng coal, they will burn uh, uh, water, then steam is created, then that steam will flow. No? Then, de definitely, kailangan nila ng constant flow rate lang ng steam no? para hindi naman mag-overspeed yung, yung, uh, yung train nila or yung machine nila no? for weaving. No? So, 
uh, one good example is in textile manufacturing. Ginagamit nila to for the weaving machines. No? So how does it work? No? So yung, itong flyball governor, uh, its measuring element is basically its uh, rotation. No? So yung rotation, at, na may kubaga meron siyang, uh, uh, I forgot the exact term for that, but uh, parang mga pads no? na, na, pin, na once na dumando yung, yung steam, ipapaikutin niya itong uh, gover- yung flyball governor. Okay? So that's the measuring element. No? Now, how does this system know if the flow rate is too high or too low? That's where the flyball governor comes in. Okay? The weight of the fly governor sets the set point no? to which uh, kung anong flow rate ba talaga yung optimum para dito sa system na to. No? So, uh, kung ano yung weight niya, kapag mas sobrang bilis ng ikot tataas siya no so what it's using is yung centrifugal force no well, we know when we spin things the tendency is for it to move outwards no so that's why you can see pag bumibilis siya tumataas siya ngayon how is it controlling the flow rate of the steam no so it's controlling the flow rate of the steam uh, by when it's going up pag sobrang bilis na ikot niya so para sinasara niya yung flow valve na to no tong butterfly valve na to then kapag bumagal siya bumubukas siya ulit to really uh, para bumukas ulit bumilis yung flow rate no then once na, na nakita natin sa movies na once na kailangan nilang mag-stop they are pulling something to blow off the excess steam para walang flow rate no so ganun yun that's how a uh, control system for the locomotive steam locomotives work before okay and basically the process it's controlling is the steam flow so napakarami na application yan anything that anything na pwede mong ma-control using a continuous motion or of this uh, rotational device here pwede mo i-control a flow of water flow of steam the movement of the trains yan yung mga loom uh, loom devices for textile manufacturing. Yan, yan yung mga naging application nila. Okay? Now, going forward, so the next industrial revolution, no? the main highlight of this one is the electrification. No? So they started to discover the use of electricity. No? Andiyan, napapasok sila. Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. No? So D- DC, ele- uh, direct current and alternating current. No? So from there, no, they were able to improve the way they do things. No, so they were already doing manufacturing, transportation with the use of uh, the steam engine. No, then with the discovery of uh, electricity, they started electrifying their uh, their country, where uh, they were able to produce more things. No, production of iron, steel, rails, machine tools, paper making, yeah. Process, do not start yung mga process industries, petroleum, chemicals, rubbers, yan. Mas na-optimize na yung production yan ngayon no? because of electrification. No, do na rin nag-start yung mga pneumatic signals, mga standard signals, then uh, they were also able to develop a device no, to control that electricity. So, andyan na yung mga uh, introduction of the relays as well, then industrial controllers. No, they were also able now to create control rooms now so as they develop the measurement of electricity the control of it and how it's used they were able now to create manufacturing facilities where it looks like this no very manual ito yung itsura ng mga old no so ngayon naka, naka computer screen lang tayo nakita mo na lahat pero before kung ano yung actual process mo kung ilang tanke yung meron ka kung ilang tubo yung meron ka yun din yung nakalagay mismo dito sa floor ng production plant mo. No, and yung mga measurements, yung mga current, voltage, flow rates yan, yan yung mga nasa dial, no? So they are start they started also using inferential measurement where uh, a certain level of voltage corresponds to a certain level of flow rate, so ganyan. That's how they are able to measure things during the second industrial revolution. Okay? So I'll be showing you a, a short clip of the ito, this goes to for the transition period no the creation of the very first uh, computing machine or the turing machine okay wait let me 
me. I'll just skip the part, but. Wala kang audio, Mike. Walang audio yung video, sir? No, no, ikaw ngayon. Now, ikaw. Okay, yan, yan. Meron na, sir. Kasi na-post mo na eh, di ba? Apo, yeah. I, I post it. You're just Kasi going ano, to show a portion of the clip? Yes, that por- yun lang portion. Actually, favorite kong movie to, pero yun lang portion na gusto ko ipakita. Oops, sorry. So, here's an example of the Turing machine, actually. Sorry. Yeah, the Turing machine. No? One of the very first computing devices. No, So, actually, you saw the measuring part, no? the data input part. No, uh, Paano nag kuha ng, in, ng information na ipoprocess tong device. So, pumunta si uh, si Alan Turing sa isang side then may in-input niya yung code. No, certain. So, that's how programming was done before. No? Then, the machine did processing. How is it able to compute? So, through electrical, uh, the electric, the circuit na meron siya. So, that's why the other uh, the other two or the other three went on the other side doing certain configuration para dun sa magiging flow ng circuit for the the machine itself to make its computation then the output would be the uh, the uh, code that it will generate no very important no this is driven by war no i think this was the first world war no so ang nagdrive ng pagdevelop nitong technology nito is war and it's yes, Mike, i think it's second world war oh, second world war yes actually sir. actually what they were decoding uh, enigma the enigma. enigma it's yes. a german german uh, encryption system technology yes technology uh, yes sir so the way that encryption machine works also is electrical systems then so very complex i uh, actually tried watching it on youtube pero kaya panood ko siya kasi nagkakaroon ako ng interest panoorin siya uh, sa time naman nawala ako sa wisho so papakinggan ko lang siya <laughs> hindi ko siya maintindihan at all but that's how they turn the tides during this war no without this machine without them creating this machine creating a machine that's capable of complex logic uh, logic uh, logic logic or computation they were they won't be able to break that enigma no so sabi nga ni nila Alan Turing and their team there are a lot of things na pwede mong input dito sa machine na to, but it will really take time for it to process it before it can give you the the desired output. No? It, it ang ano nga lang, pakatapos na yung war, hindi pa siya nag-process, tapos mag-process. No? So, with this, no, the electrical relays, no, mga uh, motors, no, with this, dito na-develop yung, or dito din nag-drive yung uh, development natin. No, to move towards computing devices. No? So, andyan din yung mga electrical relays. Yan, no? So, ito din yung mga controllers na ginagamit before. Sorry. Ganyan ang control system before. Relays. No? Relay logic. Kaya kapag magaling ka sa relay logic before, you're very important in a manufacturing facility because you're capable of creating the necessary control or maintaining the control for their system. No? The downside with that is again as we can see with what that uh, from the video clip that I showed you kapag may gusto kang palitan madali kang gagawin what more dito sa relay logic mag add ka ng isang device for measurement malaking portion ng circuit yung babaguhin mo and the downside with that is you need to shut down the entire process for you to do that no so very complicated but it's a step towards development and i, I did not include it here but uh, missile guiding systems were also developed because of the war. Now, yung mga torp- actually, torpedo guiding systems were developed. Now, yung mga, kabaga, once they started developing computers, now, they used it for wars to really uh, turn the tides against their enemies. Now, so, again, necessity uh, drives innovation. Now, but in this case, necessity for war. Now, so, now comes the transition period where uh, that development from uh, compute uh, development or the creation of the Turing machine or a comp- uh, the first abstract computing machine, no. So companies, comp- other things that saw the victory and that they knew about this technology, no? ang nagdrive naman is competition. <clears throat> That's what's happening up until now, no. no the transition period, no? no, to the technological revolution, no. So 
doon na nag-start na. Dito na nila develop yung mga circuits. No? Naka, kaya tayo nakakita ng mga components na ganyan. So, yung malalaking components na ginamit nila before, no? they started developing it to make a miniaturized version of it. No? Doon na pumasok yung electronics, circuits, transistors, may mga electronic components na ginagamit. <clears throat> Then, they were also able to create a, you know, yung doon na nag-develop yung mga modern computers, yung mga programmable computers. No, from the original concept of the Turing machine, the universal Turing machine or universal computing machine. Basically, the, the main goal was to create a device capable of uh, solving complex <clears throat> problems na depende kung ano yung gusto natin isolve. No, so, the Turing machine was built for solving yun nga, yung uh, encryption uh, program ni Enigma. Then, nandiyan na rin yung mga vacuum tubes, the improvement also as well with <clears throat> thermocop, with uh, instrumentation and inferential measurements. Okay? So, the transition period, digital era to the technical revolution. No? So, ayan na, dun, dun na pumasok yung mga computing devices. No? And they started developing it. No? Dun, na, dun nagsiwala sila uh, HP, sila IBM, yan, when they started competing for cre the creation of the best computers, no? uh, processing devices. <clears throat> no? So, kaya before, meron pang ganito. No? Mga boards na kala mo may isang city. Merong mga buildings, may mga pumps. Namukha siyang building na pag nilay it flat mo. Pero those are basically electronic components. No? Mga capacitors, resistors, iba't ibang klase uh, depending on the application. Okay? Then also the development of the integrated circuit. No? So this is basically a very big circuit But with the development of transistors and integrated circuits and nanotechnology, they were able to create a smaller version of this in such in yung mga micro in, uh, semiconductors that we call it. So, duna. Then after that, <clears throat> we move from manual control. No, this is automatic control, but manual in terms of programming configuration to a more complex but seamless. Shopee is coming. Simplest way of programming. So we are now moving from the uh, technological era where computers were developed now to the digital era where we create and we develop and we improve the, with the use of computers as well. We create simulation technology, software, you know, which enabled us to move from manual control monitoring of a plant to monitoring of a satellite remotely it's it was all done with the use of and the help of computers no so before napakalaki ng mga logic boards no but now no yung if you're updated with what apple released no the m1 imac m1 imac no yung napakalaking portion no kanilang computer is just the screen the heat sink no this is a fanless system because they were able to create one of the smallest logic boards out there with the use of their silicon or M1 chip nila, which re greatly reduced uh, power uh, consumption and uh, losses. In and they optimized the uh, uh, use of the CPUs, the video memory, and the RAM uh, all in one chip. Okay. So before I move forward with the Uh, with the discussion of the process and factor automation, no, let's apply what we have learned, no, your development and automation. Uh, before I move forward with it, so I think uh, it's good for us to take a short break, maybe five to ten minute break. Sir Jules, is that okay? Yes, no problem. Uh, okay, so I think uh, I think uh, we have some evaluation form now. Ah, yeah, 